I'm searching for life again I'm searching for a new beginning mm -hmm. I'm searching for real again I'm searching for a love that I still remember the way her voice sounded that day, like a distant siren calling out to me. When the skin on the tips of my fingers broke out with eczema, I knew that my body was stressed. It was a sign to walk. That sandy shore is where I would always walk. I would walk in the early morning hours after a sleepless night. An afternoon after calling out of work, and many times when the only thing darker than my clouded mind was the piercing night sky. Perhaps it brought me some comfort to know that other things survived in darkness. My breath was cold. My limbs lay where they might, numb against the damp early morning sand. My ears tingled with the silence that echoed from the inside out. As the tide rose, the frigid water now covered my toes, feet, ankles, quietly seducing my body to a state of numbness. I was unaware. I. Who was I anyway? The thought was foreign, irrelevant. Walking miles of that shore was an attempt to escape I, to escape what I had to face. It was easier to just walk. I left myself on that shore, completely unconcerned with the icy waves that would crash over and consume this body. This body that would be swept away without a care in the world. No cares at all. Ignorant bliss then covered the eyes, ears, and mouth of my face as I was silently rolled away into the waters. Suddenly, the waves were the only ones determining the direction of my body as I quickly manipulated the beat of my pounding head. Hair entangled from every direction, blocking any clear vision. I was going with the flow. Something slippery ever so slightly grazed against my leg from somewhere in the depths. Eyes bolted open, and a memory flooded my mind of a little girl struggling for her breath, as I am all too quickly reminded that I do not swim. How did I get caught up in these waves? Fear claws its dark fingernails up my throat as I quickly lose breath. Stay calm. I hear a voice, quiet and strong. My limbs flail in endless motion. Stay calm. I hear again, like a distant siren. If I could just rise my lips to the surface, if I could just find the oxygen to breathe. The morning rays then shone bright as I squinted, attempting to navigate my surroundings. The fear rose in my throat again like a lump of dried coal, and I swallowed harshly, forcing a breath. Endless waves coaxed me further. Push the other way. I heard her voice again and suddenly saw myself as a little girl, deciding to push myself up and out. I bellied in air for what seemed like a lifetime, and knew in that breath that no one could aid me in finding her voice. In that moment, it didn't matter where I was or why I was there. It only mattered that I found her voice. Intention's voice would guide me back. One action at a time, one breath at a time, I was able to see, to hear, taste, smell, and touch the world around me. The cold sand felt like spikes in my knees as I crawled back onto shore. After returning to the shore, I discovered that it was time to come to my senses and take intentional steps back to myself. Setting these five daily intentions has set me on a new course and allowed me to be present in my own life. No one An obstacle that I used to face was the fact that we must feed ourselves three times per day. This felt like so much work. 
I would often not eat or just eat what everybody else was eating because it was fast and easy. Setting a daily intention to taste means nourishing my own body. This has been such a source of self-love for me as I take the time to discover what my favorite foods are and prepare them for myself. Being mindful with what I put into my body allows me to discover and choose the foods that give me energy and life. I am not perfect, I still have days that I eat ice cream for dinner, but I am proud to report that I more often spend time to cook balanced meals for one. This used to feel like such a chore and now feels like the most natural part of my day. I've learned that dragon fruit is now my new favorite snack. When it is perfectly ripe, it has a mild syrupy texture that covers my mouth in ecstasy. I remember the day my brother told middle school me that it looked like a thrift store had blown up on me after spending ages putting together an outfit for school that day. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. I am not naturally gifted in the area of fashion. I tend to wear things that look fun, but more importantly, feel comfortable. My intention to touch means that I mindfully choose the items that come into my life each day, especially clothing. These items hug our bodies all day long. Taking a few minutes to mindfully decide how I want to feel and represent myself in the world that day through the clothing I put on cultivates a moment of self-awareness. Do you know that feeling when you take your favorite hoodie out of the dryer and put it on when it's still warm? Or the confidence you feel in your favorite pair of shoes? I am choosing to take a moment each day to be intentional about these things. In my journey, this intention to touch has led me to a deeper appreciation for my own unique style and comfort. If I feel good in it, then I wear it. I know now that no one can give me confidence the way I give myself confidence. With this in mind, I dress up and pack up for the day's adventure. In the words of the great Ralph Smart, breathing in that good ass prana. If you don't yet subscribe to Ralph Smart, I linked his channel below at Infinite Waters. His videos have been a consistent reminder to me of my daily intention to smell by getting out into nature and taking time to smell the roses. I have had the opportunity to live in many places. Whether I've been in the mountains, desert, city, or suburbs, I now treasure my moments spent outside as the most nourishing to my self-awareness. If I allow others to dictate my schedule, decisions, energy, and time, then I sacrifice those precious moments. I'm learning to unapologetically love my alone time. It allows me time every day to go outside and smell the air after a rainfall, smell the wood from a nearby chimney smoke, or smell the roses outside of the store, speckled in scents of citrus and clove. Considering my intention to hear, I have learned first and foremost to bask in the silence. It is here that I can hear my own voice. I can tune into my personal thoughts, which were abandoned for so long. I no longer feel the need to force a good time when all I really need is a sensory break. I love to party and gather with loved ones, but I'm learning that I don't need to feel bad for not being the life of the party. Sometimes I'm bouncing off the walls and other times I just want to chill in my silence. Most of my close friends are extroverts, but they respect that I have an intention to take quiet moments for myself, and that most times I enjoy listening more than speaking. If you're an introvert, it's important to surround yourself with friends that understand this and value you for you. Intention allows me to take these quiet moments for myself. Sometimes this can look like a cozy afternoon nap, and sometimes it's a two-minute break during a busy shift. Either way, it is here in the silence that I come back to center and remember to hear my own voice. A large part of coming back to myself can be credited to the intention to see. To see things as they are. This is a choice. By choosing to recognize things for what they are, I have acquired a superpower. Sometimes it feels easier to turn a blind eye to the truth in front of us. We glaze over and think about other things. We look down at our phone. We disassociate with our surroundings. By choosing to see, 
I ask myself questions and become aware of my surroundings. Do I have in front of me a sight of unexpected beauty? A sight of grimacing pain or discomfort? Am I viewing a complex problem, perhaps a reward? For me, taking the time to consciously recognize what is in my view has been a powerful daily intention toward nurturing my self-awareness. I have learned from my past that blinding myself from pain eventually blinds my sight altogether. By opening my eyes, I am intentionally viewing both the beauty and the pain that this life reveals, and I am ready to be there for both. I used to think I was just chill and polite by being a go-with-the-flow type of person. I would often allow others to make decisions for me. On many occasions, though, this brought me to a situation I did not want to be in. I saw firsthand why it's important to be intentional. Without intention, you leave yourself at the mercy of others, just hoping and trusting that their intention might be good. Now, choosing to be intentional with my senses has allowed me to rise out of that place of numbness and into a state of mindfulness. This has been vital in my ability to move forward in life. At times, we will set intentions perfectly. Nevertheless, life on earth doesn't always go perfectly. But having these intentions set has given me a sense of center and groundedness that I never had before. They have allowed me the foundation to now face the things I wasn't able to face. Setting these intentions means I will be present, present for my success, as well as inevitable failures. But as I learn more and more each day, it is not my failures that define me, and nor is it my success that defines me. It is not my success that gets me out of bed in the morning, nor my failure that has kept me in bed. But on those days when I haven't had the willpower to rise, it is but for a lack of intention. Whether success or failure comes, I intend to be there for them both. I intend to be there, to never again abandon myself on the shore. Sometimes, when I'm feeling strong, I walk that shore. I look into the waves and remember back to that day when her voice saved my life and knowing that if I ever find myself out there again, it will be only because I have learned to swim confidently among the waves. Her voice guiding me, her support resting firm behind me, her power, her beauty before me. Thank you, beautiful listeners. This has been a story time with Sarah Lee, where I write and record a story from my own private journal entries. Please comment below if you can testify to the power of intention or share daily intentions that have encouraged your own self-awareness. I invite you to support my channel by liking this film and sharing it with a friend. I welcome you to subscribe to Storytime with Sarah Lee, where I aim for you to be inspired, uplifted, and challenged with new stories every week. Abandoning ourselves is the deepest form of loneliness. By setting simple daily intentions, we can come back to our senses and cultivate moments of self-awareness. Continue to explore what it means to be intentional with your life and personal time. Become aware of the things that refuel your soul and set daily intentions towards those things. Intention is one act at a time. Much love, my beautiful listeners.